Okay, now, good afternoon again, everybody. <laughs> All right, thank you for, uh, for your patience. So um, I've been trying to make a concerted effort to kind of hit my points home that I give my little mini soapboxes about and have like a little visual impact. So two weeks ago, I had flowers, right? And my point there was the importance of Okay. Thank you. And then I can't remember if it was last week or the week before last. I had bread last week. Okay, it's all a blur. <laughs> this runs together. Okay, I had a piece of white bread and I had a piece of whole grain bread. And what was the difference and what was the point of that demonstration? I had orange juice on both slices of bread. I picked up the white bread, it totally disintegrated. I picked up the whole grain bread, it was still intact. What did that represent? The stomach acid was represented by the orange juice, yes. But the fact that the white bread disintegrated like that meant what in terms of your day-to-day -day when you're actually eating food? Had less fiber than the whole grain, meaning what? You, you're warm. You're warm. It's going to spike, right? Because it's going to absorb a lot faster than that whole grain, meaning that you're going to have a spike in your blood sugar um, and your insulin levels, and then you're going to feel hungrier because you're, you're, you're not going to feel as satiated, and you're going to eat more. Versus if you eat more fiber, whole grain intact fiber, it's going to keep you satiated. You're going to feel fuller for longer and there's no spike because the fiber slows down the digestion and that's what that acid as the orange juice represented okay all right so we might have to revisit that one i'm gonna say <laughs> so y'all got a c on that response a a for the flowers c on the on this one so hopefully next week you remember this one because i i'm trying to think of this stuff okay so we're going to play a game of make-believe because i can only waste so much money on buying poison to represent for the class all right <laughs> It's the principle of it. <laughs> okay, so in my cup, which is not even my cup, I have um, northern tea. So from living in Massachusetts, they don't do sweet tea up there. You have to add it yourself, okay? But since we're in the South, people like sweet tea. So this is a 20-ounce cup of sweet tea. How many teaspoons of sugar would you add to your sweet tea? As much as I want. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a teaspoon of sugar. Three, so here's one, two, three. Now, is that Carolina sweet? No. How many more will we add? About six? Okay, so I got seven teaspoons of sugar in one, tea, in one cup of tea. All right, and that's Carolina sweet, right? Okay. Diabetic tea. Okay, so in the human body, how much blood do we have circulating through our body? at any given time? For the average adult, except for my husband who knows the answer. <laughs> Five liters. Now, since we live in the United States, we don't use the metric system, we're on the imperial system. Five liters equals about how many cups? <laughs> so in one liter, uh, of fluid, it's approximately four cups. It's like 4.12 cups. So in five liters, you have about 20, a little over 21 cups of blood in your body for an, in an average adult's body at any given time. In the human body, in an average adult human body, you have five liters of blood circulating at any given time, mm -hmm. which equates to approximately 21 cups of blood. Okay, just so you can, because I know you all, you know what a cup looks like. Right. Harder to visualize liters, okay? So five liters of blood, a little over 21 cups of blood. In that five liters of blood that you have circling in your body, how, because we have to have sugar. How much sugar is needed to maintain homeostasis or optimization for you to um, live and thrive? How much sugar is needed? One teaspoon for five liters of blood or 21 cups to maintain homeostasis in the human body. It's all that's required. Okay? One teaspoon. And these sugar cues are equate to approximately one uh, U.S. teaspoon. It's, I thought that was easier than me scooping out, you know, all that. 
Okay, so let's keep that in mind. So the next part of this uh, mini lesson, this is take any kind of a political emotion out of it. I'm just talking about facts, okay? I'm just talking about, I'm not talking about civil rights or anything like that, okay? So when people refer back to the good old days and when America was great, okay, I'm not necessarily MAGA, I'm not, I'm not saying that, but when they refer to that, what time period are they referring to? Who was in, pro no, it's earlier. That's, the, that's what the political, sl political slant, <laughs> I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about, so when people, when most Americans were not overweight, when most Americans did not have a multitude of diseases and comorbidities, when people, act, it, all the food was organic naturally, wasn't special and extra expensive. Yeah, that, the real good times in terms of that. That's what I said. Take all political stuff out the door. I'm not talking about that. <laughs> this, this is not the class, and I'm not qualified. Um, so that's in the early 1900s under the uh, uh, Roosevelt um, administration. Okay, So that's why I'm saying just take that out. So in 1906, the United States was ranked number one among Ameri 100 industrialized nations in terms of health, and then the average sugar consumption, and this is refined sugar. We're never talking about fruits and stuff that's natural. This is refined sugar. The average annual sugar consumption was 19 pounds, uh, which is about two pounds per month per person a year, which you would think two pounds. You think when well, you buy those pounds of sugar at Walmart, <coughs> okay, that's in 1906, they were eating about two pounds a month per person. And that's, that was normal. Okay. So fast forward to 1996. The USA is now, was then ranked number 74. This is from the World Health Organization, by the way. This is not any personal facts ever up here, okay? This is evidence-based. In 1996, the US was ranked 74 among the same 100 industrialized nations in terms of health, and the average sugar consumption was 155 pounds per person. So that includes refined sugar, high fructose corn syrup, cane sugar, beet sugar, which is genetically modified, and that's where 95% of the sugar comes from, if it doesn't say organic, um, and artificial sweeteners, 155 pounds per person. Per, per uh, uh, Annually. Annually, and so the, uh, the two pounds before was annually. Two, two pounds per month, it was 19 annually. Oh, okay, got it. Yes, 19 pounds for the, for the year. Okay. Yes, so the USDA, they project, they have, you know, they have make their projections as all companies do, um, they project to have a minimum of 75 pounds of sugar per person, that's man, woman, and child, annually. So they know how much, because that's one of the crops that's subsidized, because all the stuff that's subsidized and stuff is not really that great for you. Mm -hmm. But that's how the subsidies work, okay? So they approximate 75 pounds of sugar per person annually, which contributes to obesity, your lowered immune response, right? Feeds the bad microorganisms in your stomach. All right, so we already talked about how much blood is in the body and how much is needed for optimal function. So do you think that there's any mistake with the United States being the marketing powerhouse of the world that when you buy something and you try to look at the nutrition label that it's in metric? <laughs> when we sell, if you go to other countries, they can put it in all different languages, but why are the nutrition facts in the metric system here when we don't use it? So when you look at something, you see four grams, you don't know what that is. And you kind of like, ignorance is bliss. I guess it's not that much. Four grams can't be that much, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here comes my visual example. We'll start with Coke. Okay. So when you read the nutrition labels, it says 75 milligrams. And you're like, you don't know. Milligrams sounds pretty small, right? All right. So when you look at sugars, total sugars, including the added sugars, is 65 grams of sugar in this little 20 ounce bottle, right? Now you all told me when I had the North Carolina diabetes tea that seven teaspoons of sugar was way too much, right? Okay, I think I heard the, I think that was the general consensus, right? So when we had the 65 grams of added sugar, how many teaspoons is that? So just so you know, so you can pull out your calculator if you can't do it in your head, Whatever you see in the grams to get into teaspoons divided by four. Okay, so on this one Coca Cola, on this one Coca Cola, um, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and a half. In one Coke. So people are like, <laughs> for the camera, she said, that's why you should drink Pepsi. <laughs> okay. And I go to the grocery store, I see people buying cases of soft drinks and guzzling them down and will swear, well, I don't eat sweets and I don't have a sweet tooth. 16 in this. Same thing goes for Red Bull, same thing goes for Gatorade that you think is healthy when you could just drink some celery juice or, or coconut water. Okay. Sugar. <laughs> well, first of all, sugar-free is a scam because they're using sugar alcohols and your body can't digest it and it's a whole other type of mess, even though so they can put zero added sugars on there because they're using sugar alcohols. That's a different conversation. Maybe I'll do that next week. Uh, and yeah, they will turn around, eat a candy bar and drink sugar-free this and that. All right, so this is Fanta, okay? So that one has 65 grams of, uh, of added sugar. So this one has 72 grams of added sugars. So how much is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 15, 16, I have small hands, y'all. <laughs> 17 and some change. It's actually supposed to be 18, but almost 18. In one of these, one. And this is refined sugar. So you see this is white as can be and a drop of mineral fiber, nothing in this, okay? So then so you, some of y'all will say this. Well, I'll just get eliminated. <laughs> <laughs> now this lemonade, now you have to watch these people now, you have to watch. Cause you're, cause a lot, a lot of people are telling me, especially when I'm taking the class, like I've been reading the labels. You don't know what in the world, none of that means. Okay. That's why I keep stressing what the daily value is and what is excellent. And remember that's based off of something else. So it's not even that much, but it's based off our system. So. Now when you see these grams, so now here's what they do on this lemonade that you would probably buy thinking this is going to be better than the Coke. Well, let's see, is this better than Coke? So first of all, they say it's two and a half servings in this one container. Two and a half servings in this 20 ounce bottle. Okay, so how many, so one serving they're saying is how much? Less than that. Well, okay, we'll, we'll round it up. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So a cup, one cup is, is one serving, two servings, and then a half, and then four ounces or half a cup is the second one, okay? So they're saying in, in one serving, which is just one cup, it's 27 grams of, sh of sugar. How, how many teaspoons is that? That's almost the same seven teaspoons that we put in here in just one cup of this. Now, y'all said this was diabetic tea. One cup of this has seven teaspoons of sugar. So in the full bottle, it has 67 grams of total sugar. All this sugar is in this one bottle of lemonade, which most people will unsuspectingly buy thinking they're doing better than buying the Pepsi, the Cheerwine, the Coca-Cola. The same thing applies when you get Red Bulls, when you get Gatorades, all that stuff. So when you read your labels, read and try to understand what it is. When you see grams, if you need to see in teaspoons, divide it by four. Pull out your calculator if you don't feel like doing math, okay? But this is terrible. And this is how a lot of Americans in particular are getting such high uh, refined sugar in their diets. Because they're saying, I don't eat all that bad, but what are you drinking? Okay? So if you want real sugar, eat real whole fruit. You don't need this, Okay? <laughs> So, yes, ma'am. Um, my girlfriend um, showed me her app. She has an app on her phone. And when you put it on the label, it'll break it down and tell you exactly what's in the label. And then they give you an evaluation. Good, bad, horrible, 
So we've been doing that a little bit, and we've been shocked. And there was one something he wanted, he said, wouldn't it be this one? <laughs> 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 he wanted to eat it, so we didn't do it. I would love for you to share that with us, uh, so we can, oh, this is already dissolved. Oh, this is, oh, I'm sorry. sorry, I got the wrong, <laughs> wasn't expecting that. But, but yeah, use this app, use whatever tools you can to know what you're actually putting into your body. No, I'm I'm gonna either throw those in the trash. I actually save my receipts to return these, and then all these sugar. <laughs> <laughs> these. So aren't, aren't so, just as bad. Excuse know, me. Juices, oh my God! First of all, if you're so Mike just asked a question about fruit juices that you buy in a grocery store. The fruit juices in the grocery store are pasteurized. We talked about pasteurization. What does that mean when it's been pasteurized? It's been, it's been heated, right? So that means the vitamin C, which is already a heat sensitive nutrient, is evaporated. All the, nu the nutrients you think you're getting are evaporated. Then they have to have some kind of preservative in there to make it shelf stable. Okay, so juice at home. Or go or buy some oranges or go to a, a juice bar where they can make it fresh for you. Don't buy these Capri Suns and Sunny Delights and I, I don't even know what's out there now. I can't even tell you. But what, if it's in a package, this is, let's just cut it out. Okay, thoughts? Thoughts on this? Anything, it, did anybody know is that much sugar in one of these bottles? No, no. I love lemonade. <laughs> Make your own. And, and the, whole, the whole concept, really, kind of like an aha moment for me when he said that, um, that all these things are in grams and in liters and all those things, which we don't use on a regular basis. And I am that guilty person who thinks I'm really doing something big by reading labels and thinking I am becoming educated and knowledgeable. So I appreciate that information, but um, I didn't know that to divide the grams down by four and to get the teeth and keep them. Um, so that has been super powerful for me because I have been consuming a whole bunch of refined sugar. As most Americans have. Yeah. Yes, Leslie? I know what we were doing, why we didn't test it. You wanted to make the cornbread, the vegan cornbread in the box? Oh, the unhealthy one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's ridiculous. You're talking to Jiffy. Uh, 15 grams. 15 grams. In that box. In that box. In that little box. And you needed like two or three of those boxes to make a proper cornbread. Yeah. So it's this bad. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> Wise. Well, to wrap this point and get into the cooking, this is the thing when I was, uh, you all, I'm, I'm in school to become a naturopathic doctor, but when I was in school for nutrition, we had to do ourselves for a week. So that we have days one through seven. So I use an app called Chronometer to track what I'm eating because I'm like, when I look at something, I want to know how much fiber is in it. Because people always talk about the calories and the protein, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, how much fiber is in it? So I use that to track everything, but it also tracks all the nutrients in the food. And it's a free app. So what I suggest you all do, if you're taking notes or if you're watching this at home, um, monitor yourself for a week. And so, and then track your sugar for that week. And then see how many teaspoons per week. So when we did this in class, teaspoons per week was 200 teaspoons per week because two pounds is very easy to get to. Remember, that was in 1906 when they didn't have all this crap that we have in grocery stores today. They didn't have that and everything was organic. Um, so that turned into um, basically it was 91 pounds of sugar a year annually that I didn't know. And I don't I, even before my whole life, I never consumed these kind of drinks. So it's very easy. That stuff adds up. And like I said, they're already estimating that you're going to have at least 75 pounds of sh sugar annually per person. That's what they're budgeting. So see where you are. You'll probably see that you're far uh, heads and heels above where you are. Your, your coffee creamers, for those who do that, all the stuff that you eat that's not a fruit or a vegetable, track the sugar. Any, look for added sugars and then see how much you're, at, you're adding up um, every year or every month. And you will see how many pounds of refined sugar you're actually getting into your diet and why you can need to totally eliminate it as much as possible. You don't need more than one teaspoon of sugar a day <laughs> for your body to be optimal for five liters or 21 cups of blood. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Any questions or comments before we start our cooking? Chronometer, C-R-O-N-O, -O, meter, M-E-T-E-R, and it's one word. Okay, thank you. Yep, and it's free. Um, 
I guess a couple of things just to wrap up my other point. I had to keep notes just to keep myself on track with my little brain dumps. So the World Health Organization considers, so if a country spends more than three to 4% of its GDP on healthcare, it's considered a sick nation. So in that same time frame in 1906, we spent about 2% of our GDP on healthcare, which you all know right now, as of 2016, this is from the World Health Organization. They don't have a, a they're working on a new one now. Um, 17% of the GDP is spent on healthcare costs. Per For Forbes magazine, 62% of Americans cannot withstand an unexpected $500 expense. So especially if you get, were to get sick and you had to pay a drastic copay or pay for some medication, that that can put you right in the poverty line and be out just with a $500 unexpected expense, 62% of Americans. In 1962, 46% of Americans were considered either overweight, obese, or morally obese. And that was when the dinner plate was nine inches, what we've talked about before. In 2008, 75% of Americans are overweight, obese, or morbidly obese, and the dinner plate is 12 inches. And we talked about how one 12 inch plate can hold 1900 calories because not only are they large, they're like shovels food because they have, it's like a bowl almost, these, these large things. Now it's not just a flat plate like they used to have. So it went from being the average of uh, Three, three meals a day on a seven inch plate would be about 1900 calories. So now it's about 5,700 calories a day on a 12 inch plate with how we make the plates. And that's all from the World Health Organization. So things were working under Theodore Roosevelt from 1901 to 1909. That's the good old days in terms of this, in terms of health, okay? Um, we did not have a budget or a trade deficit with other nations. We were the leading exporter and we were among the wealthiest and healthiest nations in the world. The average American spent under 2% of their gross annual income on health care. And then at the same time, John Muir, with the help of President Roosevelt, they opened up the national park system. They set aside more public land than any other president going forward combined. That's when people also had the front yard gardens. Everything was organic. We didn't have an onslaught, rows and rows and rows of chips and, and Intamins and all that crap they have in the grocery store. They, they didn't have that, okay? So that's a huge difference. So when people say it's not the food, and you gotta take a pill for this and a pill for that. Uh, it's been created, okay? That is a created sickness to keep people, money in people's uh, pockets. You have to take charge of your health. Do not turn your health over to your doctor. You are responsible for you, okay? That's my soapbox for today. Any questions or comments before we start cooking? Okay, all right, so I'm, pop quiz next week for those who are not watching the Super Bowl or, or whatever. All right, so we have three recipes today. We're gonna go to Indonesia today. We're gonna do one of their main dishes there and taste their flavor profile. That's the one we're gonna do last. We're gonna start off with the dessert. We're gonna do a chocolate tahini bunt cake today and we're hopefully we'll get Sharon's approval um, on since she's our desserts uh, expert in the class. Um, this is with no oils. You know, we try to you know be very sparingly if we use oils because they're so calorie dense with no nutrients. Uh, for the most part, especially if they've been heated. Uh, so it's uh, refined sugar-free, of course, um, oil-free, and technically salt-free, but it's like a little pinch, a little, a little of that of salt. Um, then after that, I'm going to, for the folks who always tell me, I like your recipes, but I just don't want to cook, um, just to help you get into the kitchen, we have a five-minute lunch. <laughs> okay, a five-minute lunch. That's my, that's my guarantee from start to finish. You, it's, a, it's a healthy whole lunch that you can have and be full um, based around chickpeas. And then we are going to wrap it up with the tempeh ketchup, which is the Indonesian dish that I will go into more detail about. So we're going to start with this chocolate tahini bundt cake. I'm going to get my hands washed and we will get started because I got to get this thing baking. Okay. All right, someone have the app open so they can keep me honest. Okay. So we've talked about avoiding white flour, white sugars, white rice. Uh, it has just, there's just so many better options for you. So <clears throat> I've been making desserts without flour. Today I'm making it with flour. The flour I'm using today is organic spouted spelt flour. And I'll pass this around so you all can look at it. Um, and I already have everything measured out. Just 
I need y'all to tell me what I'm doing first. So I'm It's if you if you were doing a whole wheat flour, this could replace the whole wheat flour. I, I don't want to answer that specific. Bacon is more of a science, so it depends on what you're preparing. So I, I can't give you a blanket answer on that. That's from my former pastry chef days. Okay, so we've got the flour. Who's keeping me on this year now? Okay. Wait, the first thing I'm supposed to do is make my flax egg, right? <laughs> okay. So I don't think I have to keep reiterating this, but in lieu of eggs, especially since I'm hearing they cost six or eight dollars a carton now, you could get your omega-3 fatty acids and fiber and protein by using a flax egg or a chia egg. And I actually have one teaspoon of ground chia from last week and one teaspoon, one tablespoon of ground chia from last week and one tablespoon of ground flax for this week. Um, yeah, for the cake, I'm, it's, it's supposed to be two tablespoons of flax, right? So I just have one tablespoon of each, so it's the same amount. Okay. So I'm gonna put in five tablespoons of water. And while I mix everything up, this will set up like a little egg for us in a second. I'm just gonna let that sit. Okay. All right, so we've got our flour. We have cocoa. That's the sugar. Where is that? All right. This is organic cocoa powder. You can also use cacao, which is the raw version, meaning it has not been heated. Cocoa powder has been heated. Mm -hmm. There's a whole grain. Okay. Yep. Ancient one of the ancient whole grains. It hasn't been fuddled with so much. <laughs> you know, I'm having a real hard time finding the ingredients. Like, I have looked, I looked everywhere for wild rice. Can't find it. The um, closest I came was Harris Teeter, and it was a blend with black rice and red yeah. rice, which is still low glycemic. Uh, I can't find the kelp noodles. Kelp noodles and wild rice are always at Whole Foods and Sprouts. <laughs> <laughs> They're always at, at, at Sprouts and, or, and, um, and Whole Foods and Organic Marketplace. And then for your other grocery stores, it's depending on, you got to talk to your grocery, grocery wow. manager. Yeah. Because now at mine, they have it, but they didn't have it before. So sometimes I don't feel like driving into Charlotte either and going to Whole Foods, but I do. I, <laughs> I understand that too. <laughs> I understand that too. It's not refrigerated? No. Oh, okay. Mm -mm, it's in an Asian section. And of course they didn't know what the hell I was talking they about. They have no idea. <laughs> you got to show them a picture. So. <laughs> okay, so we have our spelt flour. We have our cocoa powder. Of course, everything here is organic, guys. I, hope, I know you'll trust me on that by this point. And then we have our ground almonds. Okay. This, when you add the ground almonds to um, desserts, it adds moisture that uh, you would kind of get when you add oil. We're going to try not to add oil. What's next? Okay. Leslie, this is yours. I brought this so I can return it to you. Okay. We have our coconut sugar. And coconut sugar is not as sweet as brown sugar, um, but it has like a caramel, caramel kind of undertone. What else? How much? See, I gotta get y'all fed soon. Y'all starting to die on me already. Okay, let me pick up the pace. Let me pick up the pace. Okay, anything else for the dry ingredients? Okay, we're gonna do our little. Now the cardamom, you won't necessarily taste it. Um, you won't necessarily taste it, but it adds a depth of flavor. I can't find my whisk. How much cardamom? And this is the ground cardamom. If you have the cardamom pods, you can 
um, blitz it and use it. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna just give this a quick mix. I love a dump and go recipe. Hopefully y'all do too. <laughs> All right, that's fine. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and add the wet into the same one. You know, if you're doing this at home, you would do it in a separate bowl and then mix it, but I like to save the dishes <laughs> so it's not going to hurt anything. All right, what's first on our wet ingredients? Tahini. Okay, so I've already added the tahini and the maple syrup together just so I don't have to transport so much stuff over here. Organic tahini and the maple syrup that the, the expensive one of showed y'all so for those who've been in the class for a while when you think of tahini what should come to mind it's well yeah it's made from sesame seeds it's all sesame seeds but what is its nutrient um powerhouse contribution when you think of sesame seeds you think of what you should think of calcium it's one of the highest plant sources of calcium. Okay, I'm about to do some more quizzes and y'all, y'all forgetting stuff. <laughs> when you think of foods, especially the ones we do in this class, I will want you to have a nutrient association and then understand what pathology or what disease can it contribute to helping. So if someone needs a lot of calcium, well, what diseases would this help? Let me, I asked it in the wrong way. Okay. Y'all, y'all, okay. All right, so we've got the tahini and the maple. What else? The milk. The milk, okay. And here's my pinch of salt. This is cashew milk. I make my own. This is one I made, but um, no, it doesn't. It doesn't have. Some of them do, but that's the ones that usually have a bunch of ingredients. You want to make sure that it should just say whatever the nut or seed is and water. That's that's really all I should say. Anything else? The oil is optional, so if you felt like this is still a little too dry for you and you want to add in the few oil and it's just going to be an indulgence for you, then you can add in the oil. But our oil is the whole fat, which is tahini. So I swap out, so I make a lot of, most of my desserts are oil free because I can use coconut butter as the fat, I can use tahini as the fat, whatever the whole plant source is, use that as the fat so you don't have to add in oil. And then remember we said one tablespoon, one, one tablespoon of oil is how many calories? 120 calories in just one, one tablespoon. And so when we made that dressing that day, that cup and a quarter was how many calories? It was a lot. It was 2,300 calories. So when people think they're eating healthy, but they put oil and cook everything in oil, all those empty calories, when people are talking about empty calories, that's what they're referring to because you're not getting any nutritional benefit. It's certainly not making you any fuller. So you don't have that satiation. We're gonna add in our egg. Um, same thing yeah marketing <laughs> countries different countries call it different things all right so y'all saw how that kind of I guess I should have showed that a little bit better but how that kind of gelled up like an egg and so in this recipe this is just as a binder and some moisture and of course the nutrient profile the lift is coming from chemically from this. So whenever you use baking soda or baking powder, it's a chemical leavener that you're using for that particular product. So when I don't have chemical leaveners, I have to do something that I have to add vinegar to add the lift. Now I've already very lightly oiled this blunt pan. And so in 40 minutes, Cake should be ready and we'll put a glaze on top. You don't have to put a glaze on top. I think it's sweet enough, but the glaze is just tahini. This is just, um, I think I put what, three tablespoons of tahini and one tablespoon of maple syrup and mix it together as the glaze. 
if you want it like that. <laughs> Whatever she says, what we're going to do. <laughs> okay, yeah, she's our official dessert person. Some weeks I don't want to do dessert. I'm like, oh, I can't disappoint her. I have to have something. Okay. And so that's really quick. So I think sometimes you think of a, a cake with a whole wheat flour, it might seem unappealing, maybe, if you saw that refined sugar mess. But now that you know what you're putting in your body, hopefully you're excited about this whole... I don't want to leave it. I got to get it all. Sorry. Just give me a second, y'all. This is a too good to leave behind. And of course, with uh, plant-based foods, you can always um, taste as you go and not worry about anything. Even though when I wasn't plant-based, I always licked the bowl anyway, so I never had any problems. So. <laughs> so, but just in that small, rare event, you don't have to worry. You definitely don't have to worry about anything with this. All right. Uh, all right, so we're just going to spread this out. It is. But you know what I'm talking about. You need to do it. Oh. And make it do make it. it like that other one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It's, it's all right. Make like that other one. <laughs> so that recipe is is the is the mom's mother's recipe that she almost didn't want to give me till we got married. <laughs> Because <laughs> um, I have my own pound cake. I have a vanilla pound cake one. But, um, okay. Damon did figure it out, though. <laughs> okay, so we're going to put this in there. Someone set the alarm for 40 minutes. Okay. Come on, y'all. Wake back up. Come back to life. Okay, we're about to eat in five minutes. How about that? <laughs> With this five minute lunch. Well, you know what? I should have uh, made a disclaimer. Assuming you have a proper working stove that works, because this, I should have had it on so that it doesn't go against my time. Okay. All right, we'll let this warm up. Okay. Next recipe, saucy chickpeas or, ch or um, cheesy chickpeas, whatever. And Damon, if you want to go ahead and get people served. So our salad, so you can use whatever salad greens you have. I got these already pre-washed organic baby spinach. It was on sale. So I said, well, we're going to do spinach today. All right. Um, so if you have your plates, your own plates, have them out ready. And if you need a plate, uh, there's some up here. And we're going to get these distributed because these chickpeas will be done in five minutes. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, give you all an update. So I believe it was, Pat I believe it was Patricia. Um, that informed me that on the website, when you go and try to print it out, it was a printable mess. It, is. it wasn't? No. Somebody did. Okay, somebody did. When you try to print the recipes. So I've been working, I, I'm trying to. I can't print it on my phone, but I can print it on my tablet. Okay, well, hopefully we have this changed. So I figured out a way, I ain't gonna tell you the whole story. So at the bottom of the recipe, this is for going forward. I'm going to work to go back on the previous recipes, but going forward, um, there will be a card, and it has a print button right there. You can leave a, a rating. Um, you can adjust the servings. Uh, so, if, uh, so right now, this, this will yield three servings. So if you want to reduce it to one or increase it to six, whatever, you can do that. And then also, as you're cooking or as you're shopping, you can check off the ingredients as you go along. Okay. Try, look, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. 
and then it has the nutrition facts there as well. Now, I will say on this particular nutrition fact, this one is wrong. Um, the sodium is completely wrong, and I haven't figured out how to change it yet. <laughs> so, next week I'll have that figured out. Okay? Yeah, it's completely wrong. <laughs> That's not accurate. Okay? <laughs> Ridiculous. Ridiculous. I was like, really? Because like, if you like on my meal plans, when I do these, I, it's based on the US, the US uh, DA base. I don't know what this one's based on, but they, they're not aligned. So um, I'll figure that out by next time. Okay, so that is, it'll be very easy to print off on one page or two pages. It's a long recipe and you can follow along with your shopping and your cooking. So hopefully that's a help. Okay. Hopefully that's a help. Yes. So saying all that to say, I'm doubling the recipe because one recipe won't get all you all a, a, a sampling. Okay. So don't freak out because now I'm going to instead of this, uh, I'll probably use maybe not quite double, but I'm going to almost double the, the soy sauce. So it's only like four ingredients. The main thing that makes it so simple, I have my two cans of organic chickpeas. We are not going to pour out the aquafaba. As we talked about the aquafaba or this bean liquid, you can use this to make um, meringues. You can whip it to stiff peaks or soft peaks. There's so much you can do with this. You can use this as an egg. Like instead of using the chia egg, I could have used aquafaba as the egg. Um, it adds moisture as well. We're, we're going to add the entirety of the can or cans in this case to the pot. And then I'm doubling this. I'm going to add in the nutritional yeast and the oat flour. I'm using the oat flour as a thickener to make it kind of saucy. That's why I'm calling it saucy. Saucy chickpeas. Now, I like a little kick, but I know y'all don't. But I'm going to add a little, a little bit. Okay, just a little bit. Is that, was that too much or y'all can handle that? That's fine. Okay, I got approval. I got approval. Okay. And then I know it costs about three tablespoons of soy sauce. So, one, two, three. Five. I'm going to start with five and taste test. And that's it. So we wait for it to come to a simmer and it's done. So you serve this on top of any salad. If you're extra hungry, if you do your weekly meal preps and you make your baked potatoes, sweet potatoes, you can serve it on top of a sweet potato. So instead of putting on your sour cream and cheese and crap that you're putting on there, bacon bits, you put this on top of a, of a, of a baked potato, plain baked potato. Um, you can put this on top of rice. You can, I put the, uh, on the recipe, I put some things you can put on top just to give you some suggestions. You can, you can do this with, on top of pasta and have some broccoli with it. Okay, so five minutes, you can have a whole lunch so you, can't, you don't have to run out the Bojangles. Okay? There's no excuse. By the time you get in your car, this could be done. All right, so, and you have a stove that works at home. So that's the other thing. So, like I said, I added in the oat flour just to make it, Salt, so it's not just too runny. So I'm going to put the lid on it, let that just come to a little bit of a simmer, and then y'all will be served. So y'all can wait back up and get with me. Okay, I'm going to move this over here. It has a, I would say, a cheesiness to it. They could use it. Yeah, yeah they could use it. It's like watching paint dry. <laughs> We're into the boil. We're good. Do they want anyone want anybody want more salad? Oh, for staff? Okay, never mind. I take that back. Okay, so <laughs> that's right. Okay, so we've talked about chickpeas for uh, many weeks. What is this claim to fame as we're waiting for this to when you think of chickpeas, what are some things that should come to your mind? <laughs> Something you don't want to eat? <laughs> Why is that? Okay, you've been eating them. Okay. 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 Good. Good to know. That's actually really helpful. What else? What come? What? What should come to mind when you think of chickpeas? Glow glycemic. Yes. What's wrong with the texture? Grainy. 
when they're smashed, if they're not mixed properly, it can be grainy. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Is, yes. Is it it's completely clean. It is very high in everything. Pretty much all your minerals, as, as most uh, beans are, it's very high in all the nutrients. It's a complete protein. It's full of protein, um, low on the glycemic index, very high in iron and zinc and calcium and magnesium and all the stuff that you need that you should be eating beans every day, right? Whatever bean you like, add that to your diet every day. And then add some beans you may not be aware of that you may not think you like. Um, okay, we're starting to get a little sizzle here. And can, uh, can they see this? Okay. So you see how it's kind of thick? Okay. And that's it. That's really it. So you just, who can't pour beans in a, in a, in a pot and throw some seasons in it and call it a day? The, for the sauce. Yep, that's why they're called saucy chickpeas. Now I'm going to do a quick taste test to see if I need to add that last tablespoon of soy sauce. And then it'll be served. So I'll be very interested to hear you all's opinion on this because I know you all give it to me straight, which I appreciate. Where's the, uh, oh, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and add it. We're about to serve. This is just. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm going to turn this off. Oops. All right, we're gonna go with this. You can adjust it up or down. I would totally add way more red pepper flake because I don't taste a thing. You would add more what? Red pepper flake because I can't even tell it's in there. I don't even even see them. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I would keep going. I wanted to call this directly spicy chickpeas. I said, let me back it on down. <laughs> I changed it to saucy. <laughs> okay, so y'all see this sauce? So you see how this could be really good on a baked potato? That's how it just coats it. Okay. All right. So. <laughs> Baby mouths in the house. <laughs> okay. While we get ready for our main, main dish of the day. We have more salad over here too, y'all, if y'all want some. I mean, for your gut floor, you want to eat a variety, but get beans in every day. That should be a staple food. And all, like I talk about, the, all the blue zones, all the regions in the world that live to be at least 100, beans are a part of their diet. So that's something that's been proved. Greens, just eat the rainbow every day. Eat things that you're not used to eating. Keep it fresh. Please. I once heard if you this word called gold. Instead of the comb in your hair, G O M B S. Okay. If you eat this every day. Oh, G bombs. Okay, green is for, G is for green. Yep. O is for onions. M is M for mushrooms. B is for beans. Yep. And F is for seasoning. Yes. F is for what? Seasoning. Oh, seasoning. Yep. Oh. G, it's called G-bombs. Yeah, they may have just switched it, but I hear, I've learned it as G-bombs. Okay, I learned it as going. Okay, that, I, okay. All right, everybody else is going and it's going. I made it off, I said 30 seconds. He's making it for you right now. <laughs> so five minute lunch.
You can, but the flavor might come through. Yeah. Yours over here. Here you go. This is a quick five minute lunch. The main dish, I'm about to start that now. You can come back for that. <laughs> We've had collard greens twice already. <laughs> Okay, I'm not really hearing. <laughs> Salty? You're sensitive to salt, yeah. You're sensitive. Okay, and then adjust it for your season. Like I, I added a little bit more at the end, so you could have done without that. And remember, I doubled it, so you wouldn't put that much. But this is super quick, and I said you can put this on top of anything. It's easy to meal prep at the you know, beginning. Where you can put several cans and then have it for whatever you're going to have throughout the week, so you're not tempted to go and do something different. This freezes very well. And I would suggest freezing it in portions, not a huge uh, thing, because then that's, you know. Okay. Okay. You never had chickpeas before? Never, never had hummus? Oh, okay. Okay. No, thank you. Thank you. All right. So now that you got a little bit of something in your system. So it's not a, it's not a total knockout dish, but for five minutes, I think that's pretty decent. Just get something in your belly. All right. So our main dish today, because we're, this is world cuisine, the art and science of world cuisine, right? And so we're in Southeast Asia. And so the country we're in today is Indonesia. So. Let me get my, make sure I don't get off track. Okay, so the main protein source in the dish today is tempeh. Tempeh is fermented soy. So instead of tofu like we had, I believe it was last week when we did the bulgogi from Korea, I'm gonna pass these two around. Now, if you're somebody that happens to have a soy allergy, there are other options. There's this thing called Hempe. Now, I've, and this is a North Carolina company, actually. So I try to support them. And they're at all of the Whole Foods locations. <laughs> uh, I, they're working on getting to other grocery store chains. So um, they, they're like a small company that's been getting bigger and bigger, but they got a big deal, a, a deal with Whole Foods. And so they're doing it with hemp seeds, hemp seeds, chia seeds, and chickpeas instead of soybeans. So when you buy in um, tempeh, it's with whole soybeans and or with barley and millet. So you have some that have all three together, some that just has the barley and millet, some that's just barley, some that's just millet, some that's just soy. So it just, um, just depends on what it is. So I'm going to pass this around. So for those who are not familiar with, you can see what it looks like. So and instead of buying your box of chicken that's costing you what $15, this is like $3. Okay. Um, this one is a small company that just started. This was six dollars, six or seven dollars um, for how much is in it? This is for twelve ounces. Is that refrigerated? This is both both refrigerated. Yes. So um, tempeh has been fermented. Um, this is original to Indonesia. Uh, Indonesians created tempeh, and it was actually like a happy accident. They were making some tofu and tossed it out to the side, <laughs> fermented. <laughs> And it turned into like this cake. So I'm, I'm first, let me pass these two around. So like I said, I've only seen this and I'm only aware of the company right now because they're, they're a small North Carolina company um, being in Whole Foods. 
Um, but temp tempeh you can find in every single grocery store. If they have tofu, the tempeh is right beside it. Okay, and it's going to automatically be organic um, and, and all that stuff. So as you pass it around, you'll see the whole beans and it's held together by this white substance that could look moldy. And just a side note, if you open up some tempeh and it's, it seems discolored, like there's like black or brownish spots and it seems moldy, first of all, it's all mold because it's fermented, okay? It is totally edible. It's just part of the fermentation process. It can just change color. So not to be alarmed, okay? The white stuff that holds it together, so as you pass it around, that is mycelium. That's what's holding it together. So anyone familiar with mycelium? I wish Jackie was here. She's our gardener. Have you heard of mycelium before? Mm -mm. No, but I understand why your mom went there. So mycelium, that's how mushrooms grow. So you can't just put a seed underground and grow mushroom. It grows from a spore and the mycelium forms underground. So it's this whole underground network of pulling nutrients together and that's how they grow. The mycelium is on this. This is why it's super healthy. So these bean cakes, um, they're fermented and they do only ferment them in banana leaves and we eat them. Um, so like I said, it was discovered by accident. Uh, someone discarded some soybeans when they were making tofu and then they started sprouting and fermenting and they're like, oh, and they, we have something new here. And that started um, in Indonesia on the island of Java, the Java, the main um, island there. Um, and it says made, it's whole, um, the white stuff is on it is the mycelium, which is the edible mold that holds it together and, and it has those cotton-like strands. So before y'all get weirded out, I'm like you all, if, for the folks who are still doing dairy, you know, if you're doing blue cheese, you know, that's mold. There are a lot of things, you know, if you're eating mushrooms, you know, it's coming from all that. So there are, our whole bodies are made of bacteria. So these are, this is the good stuff, the, the good stuff for you. So don't get um, freaked out. So I put the official definition of mycelium instead of my colorful version. Mycelium is a web-like vegetative body of fungi that can become a mushroom when the conditions are right. Mycelium decomposes organic matter and absorbs nutrients that will fuel the production of the mushroom. And a happy byproduct of this process is the release of nutrients that also feed the other plants surrounding it and trees. So mycelium is a whole underground network and it's, it's when I mean, you have healthy soil. And just make, now if you're spraying all that crap on it that we've, we've been talking about. All right, and then side note, I know I went in a whole thing about soy consumption last week because we had a question about that. But um, this has also been shown to benefit our kidneys because animal protein is processed in the body very differently, which is a strain on the kidneys versus plant protein. And it's actually um, kidney fil filtration can shoot up 36% um, when you're eating animal protein. But if you eat plant protein, it keeps it the same. So if anybody has any kind of kidney issues, that's something you want to just keep in mind. It's a real strain your kidneys when you're um, doing the animal protein. And then it's a nutrient powerhouse because it's already a bean, right? And we already know soy is super high in a lot of stuff. So what's good for the daily value? Good is what? What percentage? I'm hearing. From 10 to 19. From 10 to 19 is good. And then 20 above is excellent. Okay, and that's the daily value based on what? <laughs> right. So when they say this part is of 30% of your vitamin D, that's so you can avoid rickets. When they say it's 20% of vitamin C, that's so you can avoid scurvy. Okay. It is not for optimum health. It's not for most of the people in this country that are diseased in some form or fashion. It is the absolute bare minimum to keep your main organs functioning. So when they talk about iodine, that's so that you don't get a goiter, you know, from not having iodine. Okay. So. Just keep that in mind. So you want to have stuff as high as possible. So on the good side with tempeh, it's good in vitamin B1, which is thiamine, B6, which is pyridoxin, which we've talked about, folate, calcium is 18%, zinc 13%, total carbs, 15 grams of carbs, which is 5% of your daily value, and 18 grams of fat, which is 28% of your daily value. So you're getting your fat and your protein and your carbs all, all in one. It's an excellent source of protein because just one um, serving is 30 grams, which is 64%. So maybe we said 30 grams per major meal and you don't need three major meals per day. Um, so 30 grams of protein is what you need. 35% um, in B2, which is riboflavin, 22% uh, in B3, niacin, 
iron, 25%, magnesium, 34%, potassium, 20%, copper, 46%, and manganese, 108%. So it is full of nutrition. It's also fiber and all that. So it's something to incorporate. And then it supports your good, the good stuff in the gut because it's been fermented, like eating kimchi or sauerkraut, you know, the probiotics that everyone's always talking about. Okay, so we're good on tempeh and why you should consider adding it to your diet as even if you want to do it as a quote unquote meat substitute. All right, so today's recipe is called tempeh manis or tempeh ketchup. So, and it's based on the. Ooh, yeah, it's hot. It comes on the. It, yeah. Anyway, it's on. Okay, sorry. All right, so a tempeh manis. Manis, traditional dish from Java, Indonesia. Um, it's a sticky, sweet, and savory dish, all all in one. It's um, the name. The, the name gets its the, the dish gets its name from the the most popular condiment in Indonesia called ketchup manis, and so it's pronounced. It's it sounds like it's spelled K E T K E T J A P, but it's spelled K E C A P. Looks like ketchup without some letters in it, but it's called ketchup. And so this is it. I got this from Super G, um, and it's sweet soy sauce. Because why does that make sense? Indonesia is one of the top producers of palm sugar, and so the palm sugar they add it to the soy sauce, and now they have this thing called ketchup manis, and that's what it is. So it's a sweet and soy sauce. It's not sweet like refined sugar cubes. It's, it has a molasses um, flavor to it. So that's where the dish gets its name. Tempeh, like I said, originated in Indonesia. This is totally original to Indonesia. And they always like put this on top of red or brown rice or any of their other favorite grains. So it's staple, staple, staple. So uh, kachap manis uh, translates to sweet sauce. Um, yeah, I think that's all I want to say on that. So let's get cooking. So this is considered um, a stir fry. OK, so I saved you all the trouble of watching me chop everything because we're about to eat soon. I'm hopefully how much time do we have left on the cake? OK, I think we should be able to eat fairly quickly together. OK, so the first thing we're going to do now, I'm making this as traditional as possible. So I'm, I'm going to use oil. If I'm making this at home, I would do a water saute. Just want to make that clear. You can saute your vegetables in water, not in oil. So I'm using this what, with water, yeah. it's the same, but, I mean, it, give it 10 minutes or 15 minutes. but it depends on how many, how big your pot is, and how many vegetables you have in the pot, but it will be the same cooking time as if you did it with oil. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's the same because as long as you have the temperature, the temperature has to be high. It can't be low. Otherwise it's just going to steam. Well, it kind of steams in, but it's going to just steam and the texture won't, it'll be kind of mushy and not crispy, which is what you want. But today I'm going to use uh, some sweet chili oil. It has a very minor kick. I don't think anybody's going to play in Rashidi. I think we're going to be good. OK, <laughs> so keep me honest. Um, I've already chopped up everything. Oh, before I do that, I want to pass around this. So one of the things in this dish that makes it super special and I mean, I guess you can say it's optional, but I wouldn't I would go to an Asian market and get it are these lime leaves. These lime leaves are incredibly aromatic um, and they're totally edible. So I'm gonna pass these around because you all can smell it for yourselves. You don't have to get a big pack like I did. They have smaller packs and they're always at Asian markets and um, Indian markets. So it's, all, it's like a constant. What's the, the sweet soy sauce, is that the same thing as the ketchup? Yes. Okay. So if you go to a um, Southeast Asian market, it will say the ketchup manis on there. If you go to a general Asian market like Super G, it'll say sweet soy sauce because the Chinese, the Chinese use this as well. All right. So we have so our, some of our more exotic flavors that you don't see in everyday cuisine. We have our lemongrass. Remember, I said this is at Food Line for Organic for 99 cents. OK, so we have our lemongrass. We have our lime leaves. We have the kachap manis, and then um, we have the tempeh. 
or hempe. So everything else in there, they um, add peanuts to it, they add crunch. So it's all about all the flavors. So you had the sour, the sweet, and all that that we talk about in the Asian cuisine. And then they want multiple textures. So we've got the flat, the uh, flash fried veg vegetables for crunch. We have a deeper crunch with the peanuts. And then we have the softness of the rice that we'll serve it with, which I'll go ahead and turn on, make sure it's a little bit still kind of warm. Yeah. Okay. So what am I doing first? Bell peppers. All right, that's done. Fry the tempeh first. Okay, so let me show you all the tempeh. Yes. Fresno chili peppers easy to find, or can you substitute something else? Yes, um, I see them consistently. It's those little, it's the red bell, the little red pepper that I brought last week. They are not that hot. Um, that's been pretty much everywhere. You can use those. Okay. Not the Fresno Serrano. It's a you know, substitute for it. Okay. Yep. That's where you'll, you'll see the Serrano's everywhere. The Fresno's depend. I chop these up pretty small because um, we want to fry these. Now, traditionally, if you go to Indonesia, these will be deep fried. And we're not going to do that. <laughs> okay. We're going to get the essence of it. And I know I have to add in more oil. But what I'm going to do is just lay this in a flat thing so it can get some color on it. Add a little bit more oil. I'll let it sit for like two minutes on this side and turn the heat back up. <coughs> and then once we get some color, I'll get the bell peppers going. So what we did, has everyone smelled the lime leaves? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's an awesome ingredient, guys. It's an awesome ingredient. So if you leave it out, it won't taste the same. Like it's, it's very distinct. So the closest thing I could say to it is make sure you definitely have the lemongrass in there and then maybe use lime zest. But it has a cheerfulness that you can't replace. Now I've gone ahead and chopped up all of our aromatics. So here I have, can you all see? Am I in the camera? We have our lime. On this, on this, you can't. I'll, 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 I'll walk back over to that side. We have our lime leaves chopped up, garlic, um, three shallots. I'm not doubling this recipe, I'm doing just a regular recipe so you all can determine if you need to go down or up, okay? Um, I did just two of the peppers. I did not de-seed it, but I did not put the whole seeds in there that's at the top. So the few seeds that got in there, I think you're going to be fine because you could just eat these, okay? For me, it tastes like a bell pepper, just a little kick, but um, what else I put in here? There's the bay leaf, the shallots, the lime leaves, garlic, the pepper. Yeah. Okay. Then that's it. And it smells amazing. It smells amazing. So you can put this in a food processor if you don't want to use your, you know, increase your knife skills, which I highly suggest you do. Or you can get one of those little chopper things. You can just do like that and work out your aggression, whatever it takes. You just do that magic chop. Yep, do that. Um, but I encourage you to get comfortable with your knife. And if you do stuff at the end of the week or when you come home from the grocery store, just do it. And just keep it in the refrigerator, then it's ready to go and you're more likely to eat it. Okay. We're almost there. You're already falling down on me after having that five minute lunch. No, we're still there. You're still there? That's not what the faces are saying. <laughs> That's okay. Savoring. Savoring. Okay. Who's gonna make that five minute lunch? Y'all will? Okay. okay. No. But I would say instead of that, maybe do Savoy cabbage that has that same Christmas like iceberg, but it has some nutrients to it. What kind of cabbage? I like to put it in my mixed grain. Oh, yeah, for the crunch and, yeah. and all that. Crunch, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's still water. I mean, it's it just, you know. The lettuce wrap for this? The chickpeas? Yeah. Baby, speak. I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. We hadn't tried that way. All right. 
So we see we're getting some color on there, right? It's getting a little little brown, getting a little tan on it. So I'm gonna let this the tempeh. Um, now I will just go ahead and give you all a heads up for people who are new to tempeh. I would suggest that you kind of slice it thin. You don't have to do it as thinly as I did, but try to slice it thin and um, and make sure it's cooked and make sure it has a very flavorful sauce because if you're not used to it, it can have a, a bitterness to it, which remember bitter is good. Your liver will thank you, okay? Your back of your mouth will stimulate those digestive enzymes. Um, but if, if you want, if you're like, oh, that's too much for me, make sure that you're cooking it and make sure it has a flavorful sauce or it can be bitter. All right, so don't say I didn't, I didn't tell you. Some people also say what you can do is boil it first to get rid of some of the bitterness. Um, so this is an extra step. So whatever you prefer. But if you chop up like this and, and fry it, I didn't taste any bitterness. I made this for my husband last night for dinner, so. <laughs> Yes, he would. <laughs> He's extremely honest. Okay. All right, so I'm going to let this go because I need to get y'all going. All right, so I'm going to pour this into a bowl, the bowl that was just in. It's got a little color on there. At home, I'll cook it just a little bit more. Okay, so now it's too hot. Just going to add a touch and we're going to add in our bell peppers. Now, if you don't like your bell peppers sliced like this, now if you want to make this quicker, you could buy the frozen organic uh, chopped bell pepper and add it in just fine. You could add all frozen organic vegetables if you so choose, um, you know, because they're done at peak harvest. So they're nice and ripe. Um, they're not artificially ripened. So you can do that and we'll speed this up even quicker. It does. It does. All right. What's next? They're about to be eaten soon. Come on, you want to go ahead and serve the rice? Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and add in the aromatics. This includes the bay leaf. Let me know when y'all can smell it. Thank you. I'm starting to smell it. Now what's next? <coughs> no. Now, it's at, I think it's what, three tablespoons of the ketchup manis? Who's following along? Three tablespoons? And then one tablespoon of soy sauce?
I'm going to let this cook for a sec. Add back in the tempeh. Y'all still with me? Okay. Yep. Really? That's a first. <laughs> I don't remember what a cooked steak smells like. I just know what that raw, you know, torture smells like. That's the timer. All right, let me do a, uh, a check. Um, Flip it on top of this. Yeah. First there. Hold up. Give it a sec. <laughs> Be called that. Okay, and we have the glaze. Think he's ready to flip already? Let's pull it away from the sides. Yeah, it should it should come out. Okay. Careful, baby. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh, the steak sauce is what you mean. Okay, I get you. I get you better. All right. All right, guys. We have to eat. Now, this cake is supposed to cool all the way and then put the glaze on it. So if I put it on there down, so it's gonna just run off. So we can just spoon some on your plate. You can try it like that. <laughs> okay. The peanuts. Y'all not keeping me honest. So did, did you add the aromatics already? <laughs> Kim, well, you left you left planet Earth for a second. <laughs> Okay, so if you let this cook down some more, it gets a little sticky because of the sweetness in it. So um, we're almost there, but it looks like y'all ready to eat now. So. Okay, let me just do a quick taste. Yes, and the lime helps cut through the little bit of the sweetness. It keeps it in balance. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, I have to do it for you, your palate, not mine. Okay. 
I won't add that last splash of soy sauce for the salt sensitive people in the room. Um, it can be. Yep. Okay. All right. So everyone's got their rice. Huh? Oh, yeah. Ooh, thank you. Let me have to bar the knife real quick. Who remembers why we add alcohol and citrus off heat? Mm -mm. Yes, ma'am. They can get bitter <clears throat> if you do it on heat. So do it off heat. I'm just going to do half a lime. I think we're there. Okay, take out this bay leaf. So now you've got some crunch from the peanuts and some chewiness from the tempeh. And then you got this umami sauce on it. There you go. All right, so I welcome your feedback on that. <laughs> Yeah. You got used to it? I mean, it works well with everything I feel. Like, it can overpower. <laughs> it can. So, if you go to Indonesia, they will have this dish. And this is not, this is already vegan. It's not like I changed it to tempeh. This is one of their dishes. It, it does kind of look like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Spicy, really? <laughs> uh oh, we got a new baby mouth, y'all. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. With a salad, because half your plate should be what? Non starchy. Non starchy. <coughs> Don't put a whole plate of this on there and then you don't have any anything green with it. It's all gone? Oh. Has yeah. It just has a few seats. Let's see what Rashidi you're the dessert person, he's the spice person. <laughs> is it okay, Rashidi, or is it too hot? It's okay? We're not too hot? Okay. It's, it's too spicy for her. I'm so sorry. How much does it change the flavor when you do it without the oil? Really beautiful flavors in there. So this particular oil I use has a little bit of kick to it. That's the kick that you're all talking about. So it will have a little bit less kick, but the flavor won't change. Okay. Yeah. The flavor won't change because I made it last night well free. Okay. So, what? Somebody ask a question? 
So yes, Indonesia was a win. Okay, that's good. Okay, I'm glad y'all like it. Hopefully we don't end on a dud with the cake. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll see. It's not super sweet, but it's, I think it's more than sweet enough, even though we didn't use, as you saw, we only used a third cup of coconut sugar, and I can't remember how much maple syrup was, but it wasn't that much. Cake. All right, so the plan is we're gonna serve the cake, and then we'll come around and dollop some of the sauce on it. So if you could wait to eat the cake with the thing. No, man. <laughs> okay. And then with that, any other questions about uh, class day ingredients, our lesson, our lesson of the day? Are we good? Okay. Um, well, once everybody gets served cake, then we'll conclude class as I get your honest feedback because I know you all will be honest with me. So this cake serves 12 to 14. Mind you, it's supposed to cool completely, guys. You can actually taste everything. So once again, just like last week with the ooey gooey, it's supposed to be cooled. <laughs> huh? What? Cutting it on that. Is that plate? You want the actual whole cart? Oh, sorry. I thought you were saying something different. Okay. Yes. What was so what made it so spicy? Um, the two um, serrano peppers, um, and then I also use this chili oil. So it has. So that that sauce right here. Yeah, because this is made with chilies and, uh, and oil, so it has a little, this has a little kick to it. The peppers, not so much. The peppers don't really have that much kick, but it has extremely mild kick, but that has more kick. So that was the kick to it. I thought y'all would probably like that a little bit. It's tahini and maple syrup mixed together. It's a, a glaze, if you will. <laughs> so whole fat sources, oil free. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I go there pretty regularly. Yeah. <laughs> I go to, there's two in university, there's one in Valentine. I, I go to, the, I shop around looking for stuff, different spices and stuff to try out. Y'all, y'all thank my husband for being so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 No, because I don't make them to all go together. I just, we have a, fe a feature dish each week that will represent a country. And right now we're in Southeast Asia. And then I usually show one as either raw or just assembly and then one dessert. But they're not necessarily to go together, but they, they can. Because in a, in a five course meal, something like three course meal, they're supposed to go together. <laughs> like have a thing, yeah. Well, the salad was a lunch for as a whole meal by itself. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't have to do it in a bun. You can do it in a regular cake pan. You can do it in a spring form pan that you just line it with a parchment paper. Um, 
It, it doesn't have to be blunt, but blunts are always easier to serve multiple people. <laughs> The, it would it would be less fudgy if it cooled completely. Huh? You're not supposed to eat it like out right out the oven like this. It's supposed to. It did. <laughs> so your your oil free cake with whole with a whole whole grain flour. <laughs> but like what? But what does Sharon say? Let's. It's sweet enough. You like this? <laughs> Just tahini with a drop of maple syrup in it. Yep. That's only I've only seen that at organic marketplace in Gastonia because they have a relationship with that farmer. Yeah. Yeah. Or unless you go from the, the not their website but go to the farm, uh, you get it from there. But it's at organic marketplace always. Mm hmm. Well, it's in the outskirts. It's in the rural part, but yeah. But that's the only place. It's not in any grocery store. Yep. Yeah. But you can, as long as you get like grade B, pure maple syrup, preferably from Canada, you can use that. Which one? The one I brought? They have it on Amazon. Where's my phone? Oh, they don't like, yeah, they don't understand the difference. If it said it used to be, then that's, that should be sufficient. Mainly, the best way, if you just buy it from Canada because they don't allow those practices there, it's okay. It's the United States maple syrup, that's the issue. You don't want grade A, you don't want any of that. So pretty much any Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They don't allow the practice in the country. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, who would make the kachit manis, the tempeh kachit? Y'all would make it? So that means y'all are going to hit up some uh, Southeast Asian markets and get some lime leaves? It's worth it. You can freeze these. You can put them in oil if you use oil. Um, you can dehydrate them, and so I was. If you you can also buy them dehydrated already. If you de, if you use them dehydrated, use it like a bay leaf where you would discard it at the end of cooking. Okay, you will eat it when it's fresh. Okay, there's a side note. So if you feel like you're not going to get through these in time, dehydrate them or, or lay them. If you don't have a dehydrator, lay them out, let them air dry, and then put them in a glass airtight container. And then they'll last for a very long time, like much like a bay leaf. So this big package, they went up in the price. It's $13, but they have like the smaller packages too. But it's a lot of leaves in here. <laughs> so. All right. So thoughts on the cake? Did everybody get cake? Okay. Cake is good? Okay. I was nervous. Room temperature. You're supposed to be everything room temperature. <laughs> warm is okay, but not not hot and not cold, right? So even when we serve this, this should have cooled down. You shouldn't have to blow in your food. It should just be warm. You didn't blow? <laughs> you just let your, the roof of your mouth burn? <laughs> okay. Right, because when we for our, our digestive tract is our body works in a very specific but a magical way. So when you're digesting food, if you're eating something cold, your body has to use energy to warm it up to 98.7 degrees. If you're eating hot food, it's got to use energy to cool it down to 98.7 degrees, which aids to why you get the itis after you eat, because you have so much energy being expelled just to regulate the temperature. And then if you're eating something dried, and I always use an example like a like a raisin, it has to turn it back into a grape. So it has to pull water. So if you're not drinking enough water, <clears throat> it'll pull water from your, your organs, your tissues to rehydrate it so it can break it down. 
So this is why you have to be properly hydrated. It's why you should eat and drink as close to room temperature as possible so that you're not expelling unnecessary energy and your body can just focus on breaking down the food and absorbing the nutrients versus, okay, well, she ate all this ice cream. Let's, let's heat that up. <laughs> she ate all this, um, you know, stuff that doesn't have nutrients and now we've got to add nutrients to it to, in order to break it down. So that's why okay, it aids in digestion. Yep. I can't hear you. Uh huh. No, sir. Yes. Several ways, because you really want to get away from the caffeine. It's a diuretic for one, uh, and for two, it blocks the absorption of magnesium, and for three, it can't. It, uh, wipes out your B vitamins, which is what you get your injury from on a day to day basis because they're water soluble and you have to replenish that every day versus like a fat soluble vitamin. So you don't want to do that. So if you need an energy boost in the morning, first of all, there's something going with your circadian rhythm and you want to, you want to, um, it's, there's more to it, but for the short answer, you can do green tea, you can do a smoothie, you can do um, dandelion root tea, which tastes like coffee. Um, gives you energy, but with no crash and with no caffeine. Then there's also mushroom coffees too that don't have the caffeine, but give you the energy, give you the flavoring as well. And don't kill your magnesium uptake and your B vitamins. Okay. Yep. There are lots of ways. That's, that's just a couple. I, I can go much deeper. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Everyone, so the cake is okay. Okay, so I can keep it. Okay. I, I don't, I, as y'all can tell, I'm a horrible salesperson. I, <laughs> I have a couple of jars of sea moss and a couple of jars of magnesium oil for anybody who wants it. Sea moss is definitely something you should take in the morning if you want sustained energy. It's a multi-mineral, so it has all, the ones I make has all 102 minerals, and I, um, it has extra vitamin C because it's always with lime. It has ginger and, um, and cayenne in it, so it's the catalyst that drives the stuff into your cells. And this flavor, this is pineapple, ginger, blueberry today. Okay, yes, ma'am. Well, That's fine. That's fine. Huh? Huh? I have, uh, there, there's three left now. Already, someone already got one. And then there's four magnesium oils. But I always, you can always go on my website and, um, and order anytime. Huh? For the oil or for the sea moss? It's just 20. Yeah, and it's concentrated. It's concentrated sea moss. So you only need one heaping tablespoon in the morning. Like you, like you take mm -hmm. Or you can put it in a smoothie, or you can put it in your tea, or whatever you want. But it's best to take it raw and not heat it up if possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so anything else? Any other comments or questions or feedback? Well, again, I will, if you all are feel so inspired to, if you want to give a testimonial, because we will be putting these out to um, go back to Rashidi, our wonderful cameraman, and give a testimony about what you like, what you learn, or what you what you like to see improved. Um, and I will see you all next week. We will be here Super Bowl Sunday. So <laughs> I will see you next week. Okay. All right. Thank you all so much. Okay. <laughs>